as Trump is getting in, Iran's like, we need to make our move, one, so they're motivated, and two, Israel's like, they're emboldened to the point now since Trump is in, hey, is it, what, we could just blow the crap out of Iran because Trump told us to blow the crap out of Iran. So now they're emboldened, yep. and Iran's supposed to. Israel's emboldened, and Iran mm -hmm. is pushing to a corner. You see how it that all goes? right there yep. is... That recipe you need for the Zika 38 war. That's why yep. he's in Absolutely. office, folks, again. Absolutely. That's why God put him in there. He's going to have to act before the 20th. They need to do this before the 20th, folks. That's what my father and I said. My father thinks they're going to... This has got to all happen, folks, quickly over the next 60 days. Be ready to pack your bags. My mansion's waiting for me, buddy. Are you it's sure close. it's there? Get it's right with close. Jesus. Will Satan use Christian YouTube channels after the rapture to tell the opposite through AI? For example, using Christian watchman, image, voice, uh, changing channel name, you know, and, and things like that. So my take on that is this. First of all, will AI robots be able to read people's mind in the tribulation? Well, I think it all depends on if, if you know, if you take the mark or not, because the way that I see it is, I, I don't think, you know, AI can't read your mind, not in our present form. Like right now, it, you know, AI can't think, you know, here, think of a number one through a hundred, you know, AI can't figure out what I'm thinking. There's no way, okay? They can't read your mind. But, you know, with the neural link that they're talking about implanting chips into people's brains, I mean, we know they're working on that. We know they've they've tested that and they've tried that, okay? And that they're they're working on that. That may be part of the mark of the beast. I mean, there's a reason why once you take that mark of the beast, you can't be saved. There's a reason there's no turning back. And, you know, many have speculated it may have to do with DNA manipulation or, or you know, changing you into something other than a natural human. That's possible. Another possibility is if, if there is a chip, an implant that goes in your brain, you know, you may not be able to control your own thoughts anymore. You, you may not literally kind of like you won't have a soul, an independent soul, because the computer can put thoughts in your mind or, or you know, and if they do this, by the way, initially it'll be like, oh, we'll make you happy all the time. You know, we're going to give you happy thoughts. But this is what I'm saying. If AI does ever hack into our brains, it's only because someone has allowed themselves to be chipped in their brain. That's my take on that. Now, as far as AI using Christian watchmen, like our images, like us three guys here using us after the tribulation to tell you something other than what we've been telling you all along. Well, you know what? I mean, even today we see deep fakes. So again, that's very possible. And those that those that want to be deceived will be deceived. God's going to send them the strong delusion because why? They did not have the love of the truth. Uh, but those who, you know, those who haven't taken the mark, uh, you know, those are the ones that the 144,000 are going to minister to, the two witnesses. God will provide him a witness uh, even in that great time of tribulation. So that's my take on the AI questions. What do you guys think? <clears throat> well, you know, I saw his video today. You can watch it on Mark Dice. It's with uh, Joe Biden. And he goes, he talks for like two minutes. And I thought that was him. It was a total fake video, Biden. And I thought it was a real video. I said to like, I'm listening to the things he's saying. And, he, and he's, he's actually being funny because I know it wasn't him speaking <laughs> because he was funny. Oh, and I can't forget about this meme from Midnight Mitch, <laughs> which features an actual photo of Joe Biden literally wearing a MAGA hat. Remember that one? <laughs> My fellow Americans and autists who voted for Trump, mm -hmm. it's your boy Dank Brandon here. I want to take a moment to congratulate the DNC on losing another election to Donald Trump. You replaced me with a candidate who has the same likability as Greasy, Hobo Tate, and expected to win, and they say I'm the retarded one. The Democrats said that I was too old, that I was too slow, that I was a joke. I mean, first Hillary loses to Donald and now Kamala. This man has beaten more women than Doug Emhoff. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Congrats on losing to Hitler again. I hope he locked you all up this time. Thank Brandon out. They were able to do that. He was basically making fun of the Democrats. He was making fun of Kamala. And the My voice matched the picture perfectly. Somebody made it. <clears throat> so I don't think it's too far-fetched that someone could take a video of me and just voice me over. I mean, you got an app for that now. I could sound like any celebrity speaking in there, and they'll take it and retranslate it. And you can actually use your favorite celebrity's voice, Morgan Freeman. That's one of the one they, they did the ad for.
And there's apps for that that cost you a dollar. Imagine if you had some really sophisticated equipment. And I know we're getting like the fish bones of what's really available. I'm sure Josh agrees with me on that, of the real tech that's available. All right. But uh, they could do stuff like that. So for AI to make a video of me dissing Jesus, saying he doesn't exist, uh, I'm a Satan worshiper and saying all that crap, okay, they can make a video of me doing that easily. Well, it's amazing to me how great AI is. I don't want to say how great it is. But the one thing it made, um, I, I like the band, like the 70 rock bands and stuff like that. And there's one song from uh, Dennis DeYoung, Sticks, it's, it's Come Sail Away. Mm-hmm. Yes, right? yep. Somebody asked AI to have uh, Freddie Mercury sing that song, okay? And it's Freddie Mercury and Dennis sound kind of similar, but I listened to it. was Freddie Mercury. It was literally, when I listened to the song, it was literally created as if Freddie Mercury sang the song. Hmm. And it was like the studio version. It was perfect. And AI put it together. Freddie Mercury never sang that song. Okay, but it made it. So, yeah. That they could do deep fakes like us, like you wouldn't believe after we're gone. Yep. yep. Go ahead, Josh. So, my take on it is this, and I am going to speak for my brother Derek, my brother Bob, and all of us watchmen here on YouTube. The way you will tell that apart is you will never hear us compromise our faith. You will never hear us compromise the blood of Jesus Christ. You will never hear us compromise the word of God. Everything that's written in the word of God is the absolute truth, and it is the cold, hard facts. You know what I'm saying? You will never hear us compromise those things. So if there comes a day where we're compromising those things, you'll know what's going on. That's right. Amen to that. That is absolutely right. I agree. I agree. Uh, I told my wife, if I start doing that, and I'm here at the house, you know, and I start doing that stuff. I was like, just ask me specific questions that only you and I would know. Yeah. Because you're dealing with a clone now. Yeah. I might be dead at that point. Yeah. Okay, you're dealing with a clone. <laughs> here's, um, here's, here's another question from Katie Ann. And this is, again, I think one that we've got to be careful what words we use. But uh, so I'm, I'm going to have to try to be careful what words I use. So the question is, what is the probability of outrageous social unrest due to the pairing of, and then they reference something which I'm going to call speculation, uh, you know, talking about graphene, something that was involved with, you know, maybe warp speed. Uh, we don't know. So we're just, and that and CERN and HARP, you know, are those two things related? Can they pair together? Um, you know, I wanted to include this because, listen, I'm not I'm not shy of any question that you send. This is kind of one of those, you know, touchy things, especially here on YouTube. I have to be careful about what I say. But, uh, you know, even if that is true, even if, you know, those two things are both in existence, um, I think right now we have no way of knowing. I think we're entering into the realm of speculation where we just have to be careful. You know, these are these are things that may be true. But we don't necessarily know that they're true, so we, we got to be careful when, when we venture into these realms of speculating how things are pan out. You know, to me, there's enough information there in the Bible that's going to lead me to understand what we're getting into in these end times and what people are going to be getting into after we're gone from here without me having to resort to speculation. So uh, that's one of those things. I don't think there's a, anything wrong with necessarily speculating on them a little bit, but to have me to try to answer that is saying to whether this will actually play into end time events. I, I don't feel qualified to say that. Cause like I said, I think that one or the other of those can be a little bit speculative. So um, that's, that's my answer to that. Do you guys have anything you, you want to add? to that or should we just move into the next question i'm fine with moving okay i think uh i think what that all that was that whole warp speed all that was was putting software in your body that won't be activated unless you take the mark i i I tend to agree i think it may be something that uh, if there's anything to it then it's it's not something for our you know our time or our generation you know um, yeah. So let's move into some, some, I've got three questions that all relate to rapture timing. So again, I'm just going to pair them together. I'll read them together and then we can kind of address, you know, all or any of whatever you want to talk about. Uh, JK Bell writes in, so what is significant for November 11th? Is there anything going on prophetically on that day? I know, Bob, you've got a lot, a lot to say, I'm sure about November 11th. Catherine oh. O writes in, does the Antichrist get revealed before the rapture? And uh, Kat writes in, if the Antichrist comes when we are raptured, doesn't that mean the time is mid-trib? Um, which, I, I'm not sure how she's getting that, but let's let's tackle that. So, Bob, you want to start with the November 11th? Because I know there is, yeah. you know, it's a high-watch date. It is a high-watch date. We see 11-11. That's 
That's very common. One, 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 one. I have my dreams about that. One, 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 one. Uh, young children are seeing that. They say that's a code opening for the doorway to heaven. So the one, 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 ones, 11, 11s, and a lot of people see it on the clock. I see it on the clocks. I see it on billboards. I see it on TV. Okay, it, it's actually become quite comical. And on top of that, you also have the uh, sign of Jonah on April 8th, which was a solar eclipse. And the 40 days later would have been uh, May 18th. Nothing happened. Okay, but here's the thing. That was seven months ago. Seven month warning. And now we're in the midst of that same count from the next solar eclipse on October 2nd. If you count 40 days from that, it lands on 11 11. Okay, so can that 40 day count to judgment be representation that the 40 day count of the sign of Jonah wasn't going to be executed from April to May? It's being executed from October to November. Okay, if that's the 40 day count. That we all should be watching right now and in fact it lands on 11 11 and the multitudes of other videos by dr barry all he has a lot of great ones out there about 11 11 and just take your pick there is so much out there right now jesus ascended into heaven acts 1 11 the um gentiles were introduced to the gospel uh acts 11 1 okay so that's us the body of christ you know, it just keeps on going. And there's, there's all kinds of uh, verses throughout the Bible. If you want to go ahead and look them up, I won't get into that. But that's pretty much my take about 11.11. It's either representing the rapture, resurrection, or the beginning of chaos. Because 11 is chaos, disorder. And there are two 11s, which is a confirmation of chaos and disorder. It's, a, it's agreement. When two more are gathered in my name, I'm in the midst of them. And it also works with his numbers as well. So, I see we got our brother Rick. We can welcome Rick to the the panel here. Brother Rick, what's hey, Rick. Man? hey guys, uh, are you shocked, everybody, that Trump won? Did you ever thought yeah. we never thought he would win, right? Yeah, I know a little bit, but not really. You know, it's kind of like eh, yeah, no, you know. So well, I'll give you my take on it when if you guys um, if you want to hear it. I mean, I right, I made ahead. a video late last night up super late watching i went i tried to went to sleep i couldn't do it i got back up again and i made my video my thoughts there's a reason why trump is being kept alive we know the bullets won't hit him because god needed him for something okay trump came up on stage and said he even admitted that i'm alive guys because there's a reason to become your president okay he is now, my father and I just got done talking a little bit ago that my father thinks that there's, they're not going to let him in there in the office on January 20th. They're just not going to let it happen. They're going to do something with the war and start a war and make this war pop off. This huge war that's coming. World War III, maybe. Iran said it. After the election, they're going to they're gonna hit Israel hard with lots of missiles. And this is coming quickly. This does not surprise me if they need a war to keep him from going in that office, even to the brink of World War III. If this happens and Israel gets smashed like it's never been hit before, God's going to need the Antichrist to, to, to stop it. That means we go home over the next two months. Bob, you know that. There's this possibility that something can sit. Folks, just because he won, he's only a the elect. He isn't the president yet. There is a still, we are not out of this yet, that he can still, we can still be going home in the next 60 days. Okay? So those of you who say, oh, we got four more years to wait for the rapture. He's going to bless. He's going to fix everything. Absolutely not, folks. We're, we, this country is in no position. We did not, oh, everybody suddenly repented. Everybody's like, oh, God's all cool with us now. He's going to bless us for four years. No, folks, that's not going to happen, folks. Everything's going to get worse in 25. It's going to get worse and worse because the birth pains are going to get worse and worse. More wars, more this, more that. God said it's not going to be a cakewalk in the last days. Okay? The pressure is on. This is what I think is coming, folks, that this is the last biggest thing that's going to happen. It's going to end with war. The rapture is going to end with the rapture, but the war is the last big sign that I believe is coming. Okay? Okay? Uh, if he somehow ends up, they let him take office, you know, they're going to do everything they can to make him look bad during his presidency. 
but I don't see us here much longer. This year, if we're here next year, count on us being out of here early next year. I think we will even make it through the whole year next year. Because that's how bad thing. And another big reason is why haven't we gone into World War III these last four years of Biden administration? Because they had a weak stance into the into this whole thing. They had a weak stance against Israel and Iran and all that. I'm sorry, not against Israel, but Iran and Russia. They had this administration that we have now has not done anything really but just give the money to a few weapons. They had, like I said in my video, <clears throat> Biden had a rose in one hand and an ice cream cone in the other hand. Now we have a president with one sword in one hand and a shield in the other. We now have a president that's tough enough to stand up against all this war stuff. And if they don't stop, we will get involved military. We have a, now this is coming with muscle power. And look at the thumbnail. So folks, this is all for a reason. God just moved a huge chess piece last night, folks, into position for things to happen. That's my take, guys. Hey, you know what's really interesting? Brother John pointed this out. Did you hear what President Trump said to Bob Kennedy? Mm -hmm. Hear what he said? No. Don't touch the oil. Yeah. yeah. Don't touch the yeah. oil. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I just caught that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's yeah, that's something, you know, something right out of the Bible right guess, there, folks. Guess, guess what verse? That's Revelation 6. Yeah. Yep. Six. yep. Harm not the wine or the oil. Yeah, that's. I just caught that. He probably didn't realize he said that, but he just ripped and, the verb right out of the Bible. And I don't know. I was like, what, "What does Bob Kennedy have to do with the oil?" You know, it's like he doesn't have authority over the oil. So why do he say that for? And why do you have to say it twice? I, the Holy Spirit stepped in right there and said, "Say this, say mm -hmm. this." And what, what he was talking about was funny. In Revelation six six was to say, "And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, a measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine." Right there is talking about the economy, talking about money. All right. And there was Trump talking about the economy, talking about money. And it says, don't touch the oil. I was like, hmm, is that a warning? Mm, he yeah. said that, though. Many of you have come to us and asked us, what will Feed My Sheep Today be able to do after the rapture resurrection takes place during the tribulation? Is there a way that we could set Feed my sheep today on autopilot after we leave. Let me introduce you to Operation Bible Storm. So what we want to do is start a separate fund just for buying Bibles and save them in a safe location and then they will be available for the Tribulation Saints because God will know where those locations are at and angels will guide the Tribulation Saints to these massive Bible stashes. Folks, this is what God instructed us to do now. We don't have much time left. And think about this. After the rapture, time's up. You can no longer do good works here on the earth unless you leave something that will be helpful to those who will be left behind. Something that will bless them immensely and help lead them to Jesus Christ. Like a gigantic stash of Bibles. This means you can continue to build up eternal rewards even though you are no longer on the earth. And think about this. What will your money, all your financial investments be doing for you 500 years from now? Or 3,000 years from now? Or for the rest of eternity? Nothing. Unless you invested in the right place. You work so hard for all of it. And yet after the rapture, you just lose it all for eternity like it just happened for nothing. It doesn't have to be that way. If you invest it into God's kingdom, he will multiply it back to you and your family for eternity at the judgment seat of Christ. So, if you've been looking for that time to finish strong, folks, this is your opportunity. I am ready for patient's Bible storm. Ready for the Bible storm. We need more Bibles. Hallelujah. Amen. With Operation Bible Storm, you can continue to finish strong while you're still here and even after you're gone. If this sounds like something that you would want to do, just go to our official website, feedmysheeptoday.org. Go there and give like you normally do, except this time, type in the words Bible Storm in the message section when you give. 
that will instruct us to designate those funds strictly only to Operation Bible Storm. Link is in the description box below. There you can give by credit card, PayPal, bank draft, and many other online options as well like Google Pay and more. And family, check this out. Now you can easily convert crypto and stocks into a donation as well. Any stock, any crypto, as easy as one, two, three, and you're done. Or if you don't want to mess with any of this, all you have to do is just pick up your smartphone and text SHEEP to 801-801 and you can very easily give right there. Don't like giving online? No problem. Send your support by mail. To Feed My Sheep Today, P.O. Box 568, Cherville, Indiana 46375. So the only question you have to ask yourself now is, how many Bibles do you want to rescue today so that way they will be available for the Tribulation Saints tomorrow? You could take a look at our charts here. These are about the average prices that we are paying now for Bibles. Folks, we all know we can't take it with us, but at least we can invest it in the right direction so that way it will continue to build God's kingdom and bless us more for eternity even after we're gone. And make sure to track your investment by following all of our other social media platforms. Links are in the description box below. Family, the stronger we finish now, the more people that could be saved during the tribulation. The link to our website to give is in the description box below. Thank you all so much for your support over the years. Let's finish strong together. Amen. Amen. I want to I want to talk about Catherine O's question. Does the Antichrist get revealed before the rapture? And uh, for that, you know, I just want to pull up the scriptures. Th Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse two that ye be not shaken in mind or troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us as that the day of Christ is at hand verse 3 let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come except there be a falling away first and the man of sin be revealed the son of perdition so you know the bible clearly tells us that the antichrist cannot be revealed until we are removed that's that's why paul was writing that letter to the thessalonians they were shaken. They thought that the tribulation had already started. And that mm -hmm. was his whole purpose in writing that letter to them is, don't be troubled. You're not going to see the Antichrist because that day cannot come, the day of the Lord, when the Antichrist comes to, you know, to, to be that first seal judgment. That day can't come in unless, unless the rapture happens first. That's mm -hmm. got to happen first. So, um, and that, that kind of ties into Kat's question also. If the Antichrist cr comes when we're raptured, doesn't that make the time mid-trib? Well, how do you get that? I mean, where? How do you do the math on that? How's that? What's that mean? Anything about mid trib? I mean, unless you're putting an understanding that somehow the Antichrist shows up in the middle of the tribulation, I mean, that doesn't really no. that doesn't make man, a lot of sense. The the Antichrist goes from the man of sin to the son of perdition. Yeah, that's what he actually transforms at mm -hmm. that point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He has a he has a midpoint appointment mm -hmm. where Satan yep. enters him. And he's supernaturally taken over. The vessel is I'm not saying his soul and spirit is, but the vessel that the man of sin was possessing at that point, that vessel will then be commandeered by the devil himself. All right. Yep. So I think that's what that's pointing. And plus, uh, what, uh, what's, uh, what Apostle Paul is saying there essentially is: Do you see this Antichrist walking around right now? No. Then the tribulation has to start yet, and the rapture resurrection hasn't happened yet. Yes. Essentially, what he's saying there. That's what he's saying. You know, if you see this guy walking around, you missed the rapture. That's what he's saying. <laughs> Pretty much. Absolutely. That's not good for you, man. Absolutely. Exactly. No, absolutely. You're absolutely right. You know, right. Trump winning right now, folks, is actually a good thing. If we would have gotten Harris in there, it would have been another four years of Biden. It would have been worse. It just wouldn't have done anything. This it would have been dead in the water. But I think now that Trump's in there, God's taking this whole thing to a new level. That's all this did, folks, and that's oh, yeah. a good thing for us. Now, instead of being bummed out, oh, we're going to be another four years. He's going to bless everything, fix it all. Absolutely not, folks. Get ready. You better be strapped in for 2025 if we even make oh, it yeah. there. 11 11 is coming, folks. What's going to happen on that day? And on my Monday, it's on a Monday. It's on my show day. I hope the rapture happens on that day. Remember the video I made? It's going to be the real yep. thing this time, guys. I would say real fast what you said there, Rick. Trump's in now. Thing is, 
Iran is pushed into a corner where they have to respond with full force now. Because if Kamala won, then Iran's like, great, we're going to get everything we need, and we don't have to go full force. Right. Okay? And Israel's like, well, we just have to wait because we're supposed to take the high road and wait for Iran to make a move, but Iran's going to get what they need from the Kamala. So we don't need to really do anything unless Iran Good acts point. in place. But since Trump is getting in, Iran's like, we need to make our move. One, so they're motivated, and two, Israel's like they're emboldened to the point now. Since Trump is in, hey, is it what well, we could just blow the crap out of Iran because Trump told us to blow the crap out of Iran? So now they're emboldened, yep. and Iran's supposed to Israel's emboldened, and Iran mm. is pushing to a corner. Let's see how it that all goes. right there yep. is. The recipe you need for the Zika 38 war. That's why he's in office, folks, again. That's why God put him in there. He's going to have to act before the 20th. They need to do this before the 20th, folks. That's what my father and I said. My father thinks they're going to... This has got to all happen, folks, quickly over the next 60 days. Be ready to pack your bags. My mansion's waiting for me, buddy. Are you sure it's there? Get right with Jesus. Bunk Bunk had actually written in this question to one of the earlier shows that I kind of had on my... My little list of notes here. Uh, Texas Dream writes in, Do you think the puppeteers, the Illuminati, and the Freemasons running this show need the votes to figure out which person will be the best Pied Piper to lead the people to the new way? Uh, also, Texas Dream writes in, Do you think it will matter which candidate wins? Will all roads lead to the rapture? Uh, explain possible scenarios. And Texas Dream also writes in, Can the grand delusion be the deception of communist politicians the people seem so blind can't discern? Then Caesar Vezdani writes in, will Trump be the false prophet enforcing the mark of the beast or will it be Kamala? Angus Johnson writes in, what if Kamala Harris got saved and became a tribulation saint after the rapture? Imagine talking to her about that in heaven. Ha ha. Uh, Enrique writes in, what if all the presidents are reptilians? I don't trust none of them. I believe they work for Satan. And then Bunk Bunk wrote in earlier before in my comments saying, Mark 1332 says not even the angels know the day so how can the two angels say the rapture will happen before the election maybe fall an angel so let me give you my hot take on these and then you guys are welcome to chime in too first of all bunk bunk i don't know what two angels you're referring to that have said that the the rapture would be before the election but whether it's angel or man if anybody is giving you a date of the rapture and saying it's going to happen on this date for sure throw stones at them when it doesn't happen please that's what needs to happen. There's false prophets out there that need to be stoned under under the Old Testament law so they'll quit, you know, spreading this this stuff and making everybody else look bad. When you hear from me or Bob or, or Josh or, or Rick, you know, we will sometimes speculate. We'll look at high watch days and it's just to keep your awareness up to say, hey, the Lord could come any day. But man, the signs are really looking like it could be soon. But there's a difference between speculating and just saying, hey, you know, keep your watch up because, you know, the Lord could come in an hour when we don't expect. There's a difference between that and there's a difference between actually setting a date. If someone's setting a date, that's that's not biblical. Um, as far as the rest of these questions, well, obviously, you know how the how the situation turned out, you know, so it's it's not Kamala that's going to be leading us in. But, you know, all roads do lead to the rapture. All roads do lead to the tribulation. Uh, I don't know if politicians are reptilians. I have no idea. I know they're in a class different from me, that's for sure. And uh, I would love if Kamala Harris got saved. As much as we like to kind of poke fun at her and as much as she's kind of been a disaster of a politician, she doesn't, she doesn't deserve hell any more than any of the rest of us do. I mean, we all deserve it, but you know what I'm saying. Jesus died for her as much as he died for me or Bob or Rick or Josh, and uh, I would love to see Kamala get saved. So that's my hot take on all those. And That question you had up there, Derek, yeah. about how the, how the angels know, uh, if we pull that back up again, talking about in uh, Mark 13, verse 32, where it says, But of that day and hour know no man, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Okay, that right there. Yep. To answer your question there, Bunk Bunk, just go to the verse previous. Uh, just read verse uh, Mark 13, 31. It'll answer your question. I see people do this all the time. If you read verse 31, the verse right before it, if you read in context, it says, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man. Okay? He's talking about heaven and earth passing away. That's what he's talking about. And the reason why no one knows the hour of that day because we're outside of time. That takes place when heaven and earth pass away. That happens after the millennial reign where time comes to an end. 
there was no more time. So you can't track day and hour. No, you can't know the day and hour because we're not tracking time no more. We're not tracking years, months, days, minutes, none of that stuff. We're outside of time. That's why the Bible says when, when Satan's loose for a short while during that time frame, it says he's loose for a short while. It doesn't say years. It doesn't say three score and five. It doesn't say any of that stuff. Okay? We're outside of time. So when the Bible says right there, when no one knows a day or hour, it's just talking about heaven and earth passing away. But because once that once that event takes place, we are completely outside of time. And you can't measure time no more. It has nothing to do with the rapture. Jesus wasn't talking about the rapture. Jesus never revealed the rapture at that point. Okay. So that has nothing to do with the rapture. So.